Thank you very much. And uh, the next item of business is topical questions. And before I call the question, uh, can I re remind members that there are active legal proceedings concerning the European arrest warrant issued in relation to Clara Ponsati. Therefore, the sub judice rule is engaged and members should be careful avoiding the details of the case or making comments that might be seen to influence proceedings. Now, having said that, could I call Claire Hockey? Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with other governments regarding the enforcement of European arrest warrants. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Presiding Officer, it's well established that the Scottish Government supports the right of the people of Catalonia to determine their own future. We profoundly regret that the Spanish Government has failed to engage in dialogue with Catalonia's politicians and that the issue is now instead subject to the judicial process. We have today been in touch with the Spanish Embassy and the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs is writing to the Spanish Ambassador to express the Scottish Government's regret at the issuing of a European arrest warrant for members of the former Catalan Government and re-elected members of the Catalan Parliament. The fact that our justice system is legally obliged to follow due process in the determination of extradition requests does not change those views. The matter is, however, now sub judice, and it's important that the Parliament should respect that, that rule, which is designed to protect the integrity of the judicial process. Under the Extradition Act 2003, Scottish ministers have no role in the determination of European arrest warrants. Our police, prosecutors and courts are independent and are legally obliged under EU and domestic law to fulfil their responsibilities. Scottish ministers have no powers to intervene in this process. However, the legal process includes the right of any individual subject to proceedings under the 2003 Act to oppose their extradition in the courts, and it's vital that the integrity of this process is protected. Enforcement of European arrest warrants is not a matter for the Scottish Government. The Lord Advocate has a statutory responsibility under the Extradition Act 2003 to conduct extradition hearings on behalf of the requesting state. This function is an aspect of his independent prosecutorial function. It is an independent and it's independent of ministers who have no role in deciding on European arrest warrant requests. The decision on whether to order extradition is a matter for the courts. Thank you. Claire Hockey. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Will the Scottish Government raise this use of the European arrest warrant with the European Commission? Cabinet Secretary. So, no, officer, um, I can uh, inform the Chamber and the Member that we have concerns over how the system of European arrest warrants is being used, and we will be raising this matter with the European Commission. I should point out to members that the European legislation establishing European arrest warrants itself makes clear that it does not modify the obligation to respect fundamental rights and fundamental legal principles. But we will, in due course, be raising the matter with the European Commission. Clear, Hockey. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And I appreciate the limitations on the Scottish Government to do or say much on any specific case to ensure the integrity of the process. However, can I ask the Scottish Government whether it will restate its opposition to the actions of the Spanish Government in general terms in relation to the arrest and imprisonment of democratically elected Catalan politicians? Cabinet Secretary. So, and also the First Minister has already said that it is time for dialogue to replace confrontation. And as I mentioned in my uh, response, we profoundly regret the fact that the Spanish Government has failed to engage in dialogue with Catalonia's politicians and that the issue has now 
found itself as being subject to the judicial process. Dialogue should find a way that complies with the rule of law, but one that also respects democracy and the right of the people of Catalonia to choose their own future. Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, there's a, a clear tension here. The Scottish Government says it supports the arrest process, but also says that Spain should not seek the arrest. Uh, previously, the Cabinet Secretary said the arrest warrant means Scotland is not viewed as, and I'll quote, a safe haven by those who seek to escape justice. So can the Cabinet Secretary be clear at what point and in what circumstances would opposition in principle turn into opposition in practice? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, uh, first of all, um, I want to correct the mischaracterisation that the member, I hope, has not deliberately set out uh, to make in the course of his question. As a government, we fully respect the due process of European arrest warrants. That's exactly what is taking place now. What we do regret is, and we profoundly regret, is the failure of the Spanish government to resolve this matter through dialogue rather than through the judicial process. But we now respect the fact that due process has been engaged as a result of a European arrest warrant being issued. And that's exactly what will happen as a result of that. Daniel Johnson to be followed by John Finney. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary pointed to the European arrest uh, warrant system as one being about the integrity of the judicial process. And outside the specifics as they may be, I think it's an example of strong European cooperation, which has enables our judicial process to pursue criminals who don't necessarily respect national boundaries. So can I ask uh, the Cabinet Secretary to update the Chamber on how the UK's withdrawal from the EU and the loss of the European arrest warrant will impact our judicial uh, system and whether there are plans for a successor arrangement? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, first of all, uh, I want to recognise the right of the people of Catalonia to self-determination and their right to do so uh, within the rule of law. And we would encourage parties, both at the Spanish government level and also at a Catalan government level, to seek to have dialogue in order to resolve these issues and to ensure that the future determination of uh, Catalonia is one which is agreed through mutual respect and through dialogue rather than confrontation. Uh, but there is also strong value in the European arrest warrant system, uh, which is used in Scotland uh, and has been used for a number of years. It is at risk as a result of Brexit, and as it stands from the discussions we've had so far with the UK government, it's unclear what any successor arrangements would be other than new extradition treaties. John Finney to be followed by Willie Rennie. John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, the legal process is understood, but of course the law doesn't operate in isolation. The former vile South African regime and indeed the present vile Israeli apartheid regime will both tell you that they've acted illegally at the time. So there must be a tipping point at which uh, point political intervention takes place. If a regime is beating, mercilessly beating innocent, defenceless citizens, if it's electing uh, if it's jailing elected politicians, what is the tipping point for the Scottish Government before there's political intervention? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Officer, I think it's important to recognise the provisions which are contained uh, within the uh, Extradition Act 2003, particularly for European arrest warrants, because the determination on whether an individual is to be extradited will be determined by the courts. And there's a number of very prescribed questions that the court must address. Amongst other things, the extradition can only be ordered if the court considers that to do so is compliant with the person's rights under the European Convention of Human Rights. So there are a number of prescribed questions which the courts need to satisfy themselves of prior to making a decision. And that's what will happen in any European arrest warrant uh, which is being uh, contested. And a key part of that is to ensure that it complies with the European Convention of Human Rights. Willie Rennie to be followed by Sandra White. Willie Rennie. Do, does the Minister agree with me that concern about this issue is not limited to those who support Scottish independence? Clara Ponsetti, an academic at St Andrews University in my constituency, is at the centre of this major political disagreement in Catalonia. It should be the political democratic process that resolves that political disagreement, just like in Scotland in 2014. 
So does the Minister agree with me that dragging this into the courts is not the long-term solution for Spain or for Catalonia? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, I'm sure the member will uh, recognise that I can't comment in any individual case because the subjudice rule now applies. However, I made it very clear in my uh, opening answer to Claire Hockey that we profoundly regret the fact that the Spanish government has failed to engage in dialogue with the Catalonian, uh, with Catalonian politicians uh, and that the issue has now found itself as part of a judicial process. And as the First Minister has also stated, this is a time for dialogue rather than confrontation and that these matters are best dealt with through dialogue, respecting the right of the people of Catalonia to self-determination and to do so within the rule of law. And in my view and in the government's view, it's in the interest of all parties to find dialogue that assists in achieving that uh, and to do so, which can prevent the need for matters ending up in the judicial process. Thank you very much. Just, I'll, I'll call two, two further members. Just be careful. The, that question strayed quite close to invoking one particular case. I think the Minister steered his way away from that, but just try not to comment on the actual case itself. Sandra White followed by Ivan McKee. Sandra Thank White. you very much, President Officer. I think members should remember that, uh, reminded that after the October referendum vote, it was the Spanish government that called for this other referendum vote. So people's rights to even vote are being compromised or have been compromised uh, by the actions of the Spanish government. Uh, will the Minister therefore join with me in condemning the actions of the Spanish government in a Europe-wide pursuit of elected Catalan politicians through the use of the European arrest warrant and does the Minister agree with me that such measures must only be pursued in human rights issues and civil liberties? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Senator Officer, um, the decision over uh, the future of uh, Catalonia is clearly a matter for uh, the people who live there and as a Democrat um, I fully respect their right to uh, self-determination and to choose the form of government that best suits their needs uh, and that's an issue uh, which is not just important to me but it's one which is enshrined within the uh, UN Charter. But as I mentioned earlier on um, uh, uh, it's important to recognise that under the existing legislation that established the European uh, arrest warrant mechanism it makes very clear that it does not modify the obligations to respect fundamental rights and fundamental legal principles and in doing so these are matters which will be considered by the court in any individual case and Ivan McKee does the cabinet secretary agree with me that countries wishing to make use of the European arrest warrant system should abide by the founding principles of the EU of liberty democracy and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms cabinet secretary General Officer, I recognise the concerns which the member has raised, which is uh, echoed by a number of other members in the course of uh, their questions. And I, as I, it, when I responded to Claire Hawkey's uh, question, uh, we shall be raising the issue of European arrest warrants uh, with the European uh, Commission. Uh, European arrest warrant is, as I mentioned to Daniel Johnston, is a very useful tool, uh, and we wish to see it uh, used in accordance with the legislation's clear reference to fundamental rights and legal principles. And we will be pursuing this matter with the European Commission in due course. Thank you very much. And I thank all the members and the Minister for their forbearance in discussing this topical issue without straying into sub matters.